A very good morning to all of you and a hearty welcome for those of you who have agreed to come for a very sinister topic like this. Normally, we have such positive and pleasant topics which make you think of the future. And here today, we are talking about death. And yet you have taken the courage of uh, logging in. I really appreciate uh, you. If I had an opportunity, I would have probably given all of you a Shaurya Chakra for your uh, courage. When we talk about this uh, thing called, you know, kick the bucket, it's an old phrase. And there's a lot of confusion as to where it evolved from. A lot of people have different versions of it. One of them being that, you know, when people wanted to hang themselves or commit suicide, they would climb on top of an overturned bucket and then uh, tie that uh, rope and the knot and they would kick the bucket and the bucket would uh, go away and this man would uh, hang. Like that, there are different stories. Let's not go into that. What we uh, are talking about today is not, you know, how you are going to kick the bucket, but we are going to talk about what they call as bucket list. Now, this also of late has become popular. There was a very good Hollywood movie about two elderly gentlemen, you know, who met when uh, they were having some terminal illness and things like that. And they wanted to make a bucket list about what they want to do. Bucket list is, uh, you know, primarily a, a list of things that you have not done before. And you become conscious and say, I should do it before I die. So I make this list saying, these are my ambitions. This is what I want to do. And try to do it and see how many you can complete. You may die tomorrow. You may die after 50 years. We don't know. But this is the concept that we make a bucket list that these are the things that I want to do. Here I want to tell you something. You know, every youngster whom we meet, let's say you meet a teenager or a student or somebody, one of the things that uh, elders uh, ask is, what is your ambition? What is your goal in life? What do you want to achieve? Both academically as well as in extracurricular activities. So you hear a lot of youngsters saying, I want to do this. I want to be the CEO of an MNC. I want to go to IIT and I want to go to Harvard and Stanford. They have all these things. Similarly, hobby wise, they say that, you know, if now the football is going on, then they want to say that I want to be the world's best footballer. I want to be this. I want to be that. So all that happens. But once you settle down in adult life, you know, you have picked up your career, you've taken up a job, you got married, you got responsibilities. Once that stage comes for some reason, People completely forget their ambitions, goals, or desires. And they have this very fatalistic attitude. Now it's too late for me to do something. And that is what I want to talk about uh, today. Just to give you a classic uh, um, in a example, there was this uh, young boy in a small village, which was almost an island away from the uh, mainland. But... <coughs> The Air Force planes who were doing their training and sorties, they used to come and fly over that uh, village. And this boy used to stand there staring at those Air Force planes. And he developed this ambition, I want to fly these fighter planes. And he worked hard. He was a very intelligent person. He did very well academically. He did everything. And then he applied to the Air Force. And he almost made it. For some very minor reason, he could not make the final call. And then he said, okay, fine, I can't do it. If I can't fly planes, I will manufacture or I will repair planes. So he went in for a course in aeronautical engineering. He qualified as an aeronautical engineer. Then he went to the, to the defense services. He worked with the DRDO. He worked uh, with uh, the um, uh, you know ISRO. And then the missile mission and this and that. And finally, one fine day, he rose up to become the president of India. You obviously know who I am talking about. And at 70 years of age, as the supreme commander of the defense forces of India, he flew in a fighter jet. This is what you know. I want you to reflect uh, uh, over. On a much, much, much smaller scale, see, as a youngster and as a uh, child, I also had this habit, I want to fly planes, I want to do this, and then nothing came out of it. Much, much later, 
I started doing some honorary work for the Indian Air Force. They invite me to different Air Force stations to do certain you know, training programs, counseling, mentoring, team building, stress management, all these things. It so happened that I was invited to a place called Bambaroli, which is the headquarters of the Central Air Command of the Indian Air Force, close to the Nepal border. When I went there, I went uh, you know, to the um, airstrip there. And the commandant there told me that we have this particular category of MiG aircraft, MiG-17, which we are out for phasing. We are going to stop them. And so we are doing the last sorties, even the non-flying people of the Indian Air Force, like Accounts Branch, Admin Branch, all these branches. We are taking them up to get a feel of flying in a uh, fighter jet one by one. And then this aircraft is going to be grounded and uh, it will be only used for you know, practice and whatever, not practice of flying, but practice of maintenance and uh, things like that. And I got an opportunity. They said, would you also like to get in? I said, sure. And if you see, I'm wearing the cap that they gave me that day. This is the aircraft, you know, which I had that uh, uh, occasion. I had not gone for that. I had gone for something totally uh, different. But this is what happened. Why I'm telling you this is to help you understand that for some reason, many of us tend to become very, you know, what do you call it, uh, fatalistic and negative and this and that. No, I'm too old for this. I can't do this. In fact, one more fantastic thing I wanted to share with you. One of my students, you know, her son went off to USA, got married, settled down there and all that. And she went to visit. And it was going to be her 60th birthday. The son said, Ma, you can ask for anything that you want. I really want to give you whatever pleases you. Please tell what birthday gift you want. And you know what she said? I want to do skydiving. I want to get into an aircraft and jump off at 30,000 feet. Can you imagine how shocked the son was? For some time, he thought that she is joking. But when she was consistent about it, she said, you told me that you will give me anything. And here in America, it's not very difficult. It's not all that expensive also. Finally, he relented. And she celebrated her 60th birthday by jumping off from an aircraft at 30,000 feet height. This is what I want you to please think. You need not talk about adventures and flyings and this and that. There are so many things that we want to do, but we somehow... Over a period of time, we give up on uh, uh, them and we just sort of, you know, keep on neglecting. We get too busy in our day-to-day -day normal routine and we don't want to get to anything else. We don't want to think beyond that. And as age grows, we start, you know, narrowing down our world. We, I can't do this. I can't do that. All these uh, things. So if I have been able to stimulate you a little bit, let us talk about how one can make a bucket uh, list. What is this thing called a bucket list and how you can go about making it at a practical level. As usual, I made out some points and gave it to Anis and Anis has made them into some nice attractive slides. And here they are. How to make a bucket list. The first one is start with the easy stuff. If you start off by saying, I want to fly a fighter jet or I want to jump off from 30,000 feet, it may or may not happen and then you'll get disappointed. No. So start with easy stuff, some small things which somehow you want to do, you have not done earlier, maybe, you know, it will please you if you do it sometime in the future. So start with uh, uh, that. Then start thinking about what you wanted to do when you were a kid. Go back all the way to your childhood and list out all your dreams as you grow up. There will be so many small, small things that you wanted to do. Make a comprehensive list of that. You wanted to be a film star, you wanted to be something else, you wanted to be an astronaut, whatever you wanted, make a complete list of that. Don't reject uh, anything. And also list out along with that some serious needed things that I think in my lifetime, I should do this, 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 I should achieve that. Add some weird stuff to it, something funny, something unusual. 
it you know creates that variety which is the spice of uh, life think about the overall experience you want i want to feel happy about this i want to feel that i have done this achievement i have feel, feel that way like that think of the overall experiences and then sort it in descending order of that over is a typo sort it in descending order of importance what is most important to me and what is least important so that even if you fill in a few of those which are top in your list you start getting that motivation and that uh, inspiration if you've never done this sort of exercise ask friends also some friend may give you an idea you say hey let me also do this uh, uh, thing what were their desires you will be stimulating them you will be making them also think about a bucket list you will get some ideas and you will reconnect you will have friends who become part of your team you have a common objective that is what i want you to uh, do reconnect with the or old friends people who have drifted away that's another very wonderful thing about uh, you know making a bucket uh, uh, list try and see who are the people with whom you had a nice time in childhood or adolescence or whenever it happened and those who still have a sentiment for you or you have a sentiment for them try to connect it back that is one aspect of uh, you know this bucket list which i find is very very uh, useful so this is what i wanted to share with you that how do you start off going about with the concept of the uh, bucket uh, list okay. the other thing that i wanted to tell you is that while bucket list inevitably talks about death that i want to achieve this before i die that's the whole concept but remember that death is not something which is uh, you know so important or so uh, morbid or so horrifying or something uh, like that there was a very nice cartoon where one kid is telling the other uh, one you know we only live once isn't it and the other kid in all his wisdom says no we only die once we live every day can you take up that as your policy regardless of what age and what stage of life uh, uh, you are uh, in so things like these bucket list have proven to become motivators in life you say okay i don't know when i'm going to die i don't know how much time i have left but when i say that i have a bucket list i have certain things which i want to achieve while i'm alive that makes the quality of your life richer you start you know feeling a little more positive and motivated towards your uh, uh, life it also brings out what we call as the inner child many of us have suppressed our inner child and taken ourselves too seriously no i am an adult oh i am so many years old oh i am a parent i am this i am the, uh, working in a responsible position all these things when you start doing uh, that what happens is that your inner child the child which wants you to remain child like which is different from childish when you start doing that life itself becomes that much more pleasant and things like that it also reduces your uh, fear of old age many people say okay i don't mind uh, uh, dying but i don't want to die with pain and become old and infirm and bedridden and whatever it is you don't know what uh, it is all about why do you worry about something which may or may not uh, you know um, happen in fact something very uh, interesting about uh, uh, this uh, um, aspect is i don't know how many people uh, are aware today is the you know international day for the welfare of disabled disabled people people with any form of disability which we now refer to as differently abled there's a very interesting uh, uh, you know discussion long back in the american Social, uh, association of the uh, disabled persons one day in their conference they started thinking that 
the normal people, so-called normal people, keep giving us labels. No, they call us handicapped, disabled, challenged, all sorts of labels they use. Why not we put a label to a person who has no form of physical disability? And they had a very lively discussion on it. And finally, they came out saying, we will call all these people as TABS, T-A-B. It is an acronym for Temporarily Able-Bodied. Today I can walk, today I can hear, today I can see. Is there any guarantee that tomorrow I will have the same uh, abilities? No, no. And it need not happen in old age. It can happen at any uh, age. I have a wonderful uh, student who at 13 years of age lost both his arms. And today he's a very successful professional married to a lovely girl doing very well in his career and does a lot of social work for others. It's amazing to see that young man without both his hands. And can you believe me? He actually rides a motorbike. In fact, I was privileged to connect him and somehow fight for his rights along with my senior colleague, Mr. Ramsamy, to get him a driving license. RTO was shocked when he applied for a uh, driving license, but we managed to get it. He now has a license. He has a bike. And you know what is there on his bucket list? He wants to take his bike and go to Ladakh and Leh. That is one of the items on his bucket uh, uh, list. So even disability, illness, old age, which we normally get very scared of and which we you know, think, oh, what will happen when I go old? I don't want to suffer. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Remind yourself that pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. I know people in severe pain. I have excellent friends who are completely paralyzed, spinal cord injury. What worse than that? But they are not negative thinkers. They are very positive thinkers. They enjoy life. They look forward to a lot of things in life. If such people can do it, why can't the able-bodied people do it? The worst that will happen is, yes, you'll become old, you'll become sick, you may be better than you may be in pain. Part of life, no? So more important than that is to make your uh, you know, bucket list, which will help you to look forward. Okay. Now, when you are making these uh, uh, things, there are a few parameters or aspects to be aware of. And that, again, I made it into bullet points. And here is Anissa's uh, you know, slideshow, as she always makes for us. And she's going to show you what are the parameters that need to be checked when you are making your uh, bucket uh, list. First, only talk about things which are in your control. If I say that my bucket list includes that my son should start loving me more or taking more care of me, that's not a bucket list. I can't control my son. A bucket list can be, I will do something to win the love of my uh, son. I will do things which will help me to do this. So things which are within your uh, control. And be specific. Wherever possible, set a time limit. Where it is not possible, it doesn't matter. But wherever possible, do set a time limit. Otherwise, you'll just procrastinate. You'll just make one fancy list and it will lie remaining somewhere in some cupboard or drawer. This year, now we have come to December. Before December ends, before 2022 ends, I want to do this particular thing. Something else for which I need more resources, I will set a target that I will do it before 2023 ends, like that. Then talk to those who you wish to involve. Many people will laugh at you. Many people will discard you. Like how my student's son said, what, ma, at 60 years of age, you want to do uh, skydiving and this and that. Don't be ridiculous and all that. Doesn't matter. If you are persistent, if you are consistent, and if you show people that you mean it seriously, they will uh, uh, relent. Share your life list with the other that this is what I have done. This is what I wanted to do earlier, and this is what I am now making into my bucket list. To motivate you and to you know take you forward, keep a record of your old goals. 
there was a time when i wanted to do this there was a time when i wanted to lose you know uh, learn how to uh, play a musical instrument there was a time when i wanted to visit such and such uh, exotic place but somehow it never came about to that you add one or two things that are exciting adventurous like this person did uh, you know uh, talking about skydiving update your list of goals every year don't do it as a one time exercise and say okay i made it some i can achieve some i can't achieve keep that list alive keep updating it keep removing things which you have already done maybe one or two things which are now totally out of your control and you cannot do so why dream about something which is totally impossible but like i said do not write off things which are not impossible you don't know when you will be able to fly in a uh, fighter plane so i would not say that that is an impossible uh, list don't feel guilty or think of your age don't think oh how selfish i am i'm thinking of spending so much money and going for this 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 world tour and all that no there's nothing wrong with it if it's your hard earned money if you are growing more and more older in age where which all of us are uh, doing you have a right to pamper yourself you have a right to look after yourself then comes a very dangerous thing visualize when you are likely to die hardly anybody has uh, these thoughts we run away from childhood we are protected and kept away from death if there is a death happening in the family the children are first taken out and sent off to some neighbor or relatives uh, house let them not see the dead body let them not see the grieving that is going on i think that is very unfair children should be exposed to life and to death and you should learn to visualize your own death not in that negative manner i told you know that oh will i grow old will i do this will i get cancer will i get this will i get that no not like that think of it as a very you know transitory thing that is that one day when you are going to uh, you know die and move on to wherever whatever according to your uh, belief it is just a sort of you know transition of uh, the uh, uh, life span if you think of these things and start you know looking into all these uh, um, aspects let me also tell you about since i spoke about you know visualizing your death i want to tell you something more which i keep telling to whoever is willing to listen to me please make a will if you own property definitely you should have made a will yesterday some people say no i don't own property there's no property in my name so what is the use of a will you may have a bank account that bank account will be stuck if you suddenly die your legal heirs will not be able to ex- access it even if you have nominated their name remember nomination is only a process of convenience it's not a legal you know passing on it doesn't mean that the person will automatically get your bank balance it may be small small things it may be you know you may be have a vehicle and now you know your spouse or your child wants to transfer the vehicle in their name if there is a will immediately it shows yes you are the successor and you can get it transferred over here so many things like that you know can be done and i also want to assure you that unlike earlier years a will today has become a very easy and convenient uh, uh, process and it is not questionable you must have heard stories about somebody making a will and then when he dies somebody else contests and says that no it is a forgery no he was forced to do it no he was unconscious and his thumb impression was taken on uh, that those days are gone today a will is registered in the nearest registrar office any advocate you know will be able to do this process for you within one day firstly who are your legal heirs don't bother about what assets you have whether i have one property or three properties one vehicle five vehicle no whoever you want you say whenever i die whatever assets i have left in the, my name when i die should go to x y z in this proportion that's it make it as simple as possible and then the advocate will take you to the registrar office 
If it is crowded, you may have to wait for some time, but the entire process is 10 minutes. They put you in front of the webcam and they take a photograph of yours. So they know that you have come there, you are willingly sitting in front of the camera and your photograph is being taken. Secondly, they take your thumb impression electronically, which cannot be uh, forged. And then the uh, witnesses photograph and the witnesses uh, thumb impressions. That's it. After that, even if the will is lost, you can 10 years later also, you can go back to the registrar office and say, approximately in the month of December in 2022, my father had signed a will. I am not finding it. Can you please give me another copy? And they will go back into their electronic records. And from there, they will produce the will and copy and give it to you. Just have to pay some money, the fees, that's all. So that is how it has become a foolproof process. People actually, it's very funny, you know, people actually get offended when uh, I tell them you make a will. They think that, uh, you know, making a will is sort of, uh, you know, uh, bringing your death closer uh, to you. The same way as traditionally people used to say, don't talk about death, don't talk about death and all that. The Hindi speaking people will uh, uh, recall that, you know, anybody talks, I don't know, maybe when I die, shub shub bolo, yaar, shub shub bolo. Meaning to say, don't talk about your uh, death. Why? There's only one thing in uh, uh, life which is 100% sure, which is death. And yet you say that I don't want to talk about it or you should not talk uh, uh, about it. Once you overcome that fear. See, any fear you can overcome if you tackle it and face it. The funny thing is, the more you run away from something, the more it keeps chasing you. And when it is behind you, you can't even see it and you don't know how close it is coming. This is something which I learned long back about stray dogs. Keep this in mind. You're walking on the road and suddenly one dog from nowhere comes, ferociously barking at you. Many people, you know what they do, no? They turn around and run. And the dog chases them, sometimes bites them. With most of the dogs, all you need to do is to stand firm, make eye contact, and softly ask him, what happened? Why are you angry? Believe me, try it out and see. Innumerable times I have done that. And the dog just stares at me and says, okay, this fellow doesn't seem to be scared, so why am I wasting time? And he goes off. Same thing happens with death. The more you are scared of it, the more death chases uh, uh, you. There was an old uh, you know, story from the Arabian Nights or somewhere where there was this very rich you know, man who was enjoying life. He had all the pleasures of the world and he had wealth and he had uh, uh, everything. And one day he went to another uh, uh, city, some hundred miles away, and he was doing some shopping over there. When the angel of death, Yamdut, suddenly turned up and said, what are you doing here? I was asked to collect your soul and bring it back. Uh, so this man got the shock of his life. And he turned around, ran to his camel, jumped on the camel and rode and rode and rode and rode 100 miles. Just before the end of the day, he landed up at his house and was giving a sigh of relief. As he entered, he saw Mr. Yamdut sitting there. And Yamdut said, that is why I asked you in the morning, what are you doing here? Because I was asked to collect your soul from your house. And I was thinking that when you are so far away from your house, you will not come back today. So I may not be able to collect your soul. But thank you. You took so much trouble that you came back home. So here I am. I'm taking your soul and bye-bye. I mean, this may be a fable or a story or whatever it is. But it highlights the fact that the more you run away from death, the more you keep away from it, the more it chases you from behind. And anything chasing you from behind, you can't even see it. You don't know how close it is. You don't know what it is going to do to you, isn't it? So bucket list is one of the ways and means 
by which you can actually keep you know in touch with reality with life the more you accept death the better life uh, uh, big uh, you know starts uh, uh, becoming and that so many people do not understand these are some of the uh, things acha one more last point you know you heard of a lot of people these days are talking about minimalism having minimal things this is very applicable in today's high tech world where economy is growing well we are into you know living in metropolitan cities and enjoying all the luxuries where anything is available at the touch of a button you can get delivered whatever you want and all these things think of the concept of minimalism that is can you minimize whatever things you have in life i have got three vehicles do i need three vehicles i have got 50 sets of dresses or 20 sets of dresses do i really need uh, them do i need all this extra furniture which is lying around do i need all this jewelry or whatever i uh, have do i need this do i need that if you can bring yourself down to the basic necessities one thing that will happen is that you will have more you know resources or cash available in case of an emergency if you have already spent it off and more so if you have bought something on emi is where you are still paying for it for years and years then if there is an emergency like last month you know what happened there was this huge spate of people from very good companies and very good jobs who suddenly lost their uh, livelihood and their jobs the whole of last month we have been tackling so many such cases but if the same people who are in very good jobs earning very well instead of enhancing their uh, you know lifestyle and acquiring assets and taking up loans if they had said yes i am happy that i am earning so much and i very uh, contented with it but i don't need all these things so if i don't need a huge house i will buy a smaller house if i don't need a luxury car i'll buy a functional uh, car if i don't need 50 dresses i will have only five uh, dresses i have the money whenever i want i can buy five more so there's nothing preventing me from it but today why should i splurge on so many things the moment you start getting into that concept of you know minimalism that means i will ensure that i have only those things which are absolutely necessary and if you are a parent please remember that that is what influences others also your you know role modeling or the way you behave affects children affects the younger uh, generation you will have this child who will come and say i have to buy a, a shoe i want only a nike shoe you say that unbranded shoes are equally good and they are available for one third of the price no i want only a nike shoe and if you investigate you will find that without realizing the father was telling the mother and he didn't even pay attention to the fact that the child was uh, listening saying that i have an excellent car it's giving me very good service probably it will last so many years more but you know when i go to office and i see the cars of my colleagues all of them have got these big cars and mine is the only one which is small and old and all that so there was this guy who said that you only pay 10% and i'll get you a car on emis and all that so what if it costs so many lakhs or whatever it's worth it no i will also be equal to the others when he started doing that his child picked it up and this becomes like a disease it becomes like an epidemic so this is the time for you to think i want to enjoy life i want to make my bucket list i want to see how many of those i can actually fulfill and i'm going to celebrate every time i tick off one item from that list but i am not going to be a hoarder i am not going to grab things and start accumulating wealth that is what is going to make a significant uh, difference
okay uh, i will take the break a few minutes later because we have some very interesting comments and questions and this will put them on the screen you can see and i will respond to them starting with mr navneet kumar saraf from maharashtra who is our regular interactor with us he is an educationist saraf saab says in my childhood old people would say my half of the last rites material has already gone to crematorium such comments would boost living rather than demoralizing nowadays no one comments such death related issues yes sir i am absolutely in agreement with you let us be pragmatic let us accept certain things which are reality and that itself is one more item on your bucket list right surekha says unless i have a game plan towards my bucket list all the items in it would remain as unfulfilled wishes very true that's why if you mentioned in this if you recall in the second set of uh, slides i wrote down how you can get going so maybe you catch hold of one or two friends and say you make a bucket list i make a bucket list and we will review once every month we will talk to each other and we'll see how much we have done so you feel obligated that i must show to my friend that i've done at least one or two out of these uh, uh, things bounce it off from your friends this is practical this is what i was thinking of doing should i do it should i not do it do you think this is possible how do i prioritize so if you make that you know the concept of understanding and implementing there is a very nice proverb which says plan your work and work your plan a lot of people make plans a lot of people make bucket lists but they don't go ahead so now that surekha has told us about this thing that you know you need to be aware of these things please go ahead okay so jetna says good morning ali and team in my bucket list first item is making a will thank you so much for highlighting on making a will yes uh, so jetna as i told you just catch hold of any you know reasonable you don't have to go to a top level advocate or somebody any good decent uh, advocate who's an honest guy you just go to him he'll charge you a very nominal uh, amount prepare a draft and show it to you just be clear about whom you want to give away on your assets when you don't have to start listing that my car will go to so and so my fridge will go to so and so my washing machine will just divide it between whoever are your loved ones if there's something specific that you want to give to somebody you can mention that otherwise because you don't know you may live for another 40 years from now by the time all your assets and your properties may change so there's no point in uh, you know writing specific things but it can be done and once you do it also remember that you can change it whenever you want there was a very nice uh, joke about a very elderly person who slowly went deaf so for a long time he was deaf he couldn't hear anything then he went to a doctor and his doctor said that now we have this thing called cochlear implant you implant that into your ear and you start hearing fantastic is a very basic surgery i'll do it and i'll send you home he did it and he sent him home and he said come back after a month we'll review after a month this patient went back to the doctor and the doctor is asking him how was it is it working well excellent doctor it's working beautifully i can hear everything he said then your family members must be very happy that you can hear now isn't it he said no i have not told my family members that i can hear but in this last one month i have changed my will three times that's on a lighter note but as i said you can you can change your will whenever you uh, want right okay vinita says very truly i still feel many people are very uncomfortable talking about death we just need to understand and accept that death will happen one day and we should not stop living our life that's what i said even that cartoon of charlie brown which says that you know death happens only once but we live every day that is the spirit that i want all of us to look uh, uh, into so jetna says visualizing our death if we do it once a while it helps us being more practical about our living and death yes that's why i keep telling people do visualize so when you you know relax and you are you are sitting alone and all that just close your eyes lean back and start thinking what will happen when will it happen whether it happens tomorrow or whether it happens 50 years from now doesn't make a difference since it is inevitable what is it is there anything that i have missed out is there anything that i will lose out and that will give you further impetus to improve on your 
bucket list. Ah, Roshan says, swimming is my passion. Love to surf on water and learn scuba diving. Why not? Go from swimming to scuba diving to deep sea diving to maybe uh, one day you will go in a submarine also, Roshan. We don't know. So that is what I want you to think. Start with small things like this. When you are swimming as a passion, you say, okay, from swimming, I'm going to one fine day do scuba diving. Why not? Right. Ah, Roshan also says Ali is a great storyteller. Ah, Yamdut sitting in your uh, house is something to think about. Cannot avoid death. No need to fear death, but to rejoice every day of your life. Tell me, Sir Yamdut, you're most welcome. Come someday. We'll sit and have a cup of tea together. Then you hold my hand and take me wherever you want to uh, take me. Once you develop that attitude, believe me, life becomes so much more simpler, easier and the way you will be able to run your uh, life. Right. Yes, Renu says, <coughs> sorry, many are scared to make will of property and donating organs will because it threatens their safety and life. No, Renu, it does not. It makes things very, very easy and convenient. If you love somebody, for example, if I have got a house, and my wife and me are living in that house, but the house is in my name. What happens when I die? But if I make a will where I have said that my property should go to my ear, whatever property I own when I die, will go to my wife. That's it. One sentence and it is done. So my wife is taken care of. If it happens very suddenly, if it happens at a time when I don't know. The other day I was telling one of my students, a youngster and has got a small child. I was telling her to tell her husband. She doesn't earn anything. She's got no assets. So I was telling her to tell her husband to make a will. Make a will in the name of the child. He's very young. So he got very uh, you know, upset. He said, why should I make a will? You think I'm going to die or something? I told her to tell him that if you die 30 years from now, without making a will, it may not affect anybody because your son would have grown up and he would be doing well on his own. But by chance, 0.1% chance, you die tomorrow. Imagine that small child, he needs financial security. So the very fact that you made that will will give you the reassurance that my child is taken care of, like how you buy insurance. A will is something like uh, insurance. Ah, Shobha says, I want to start a counseling center like you, Ali, and travel all over the world. Two things, yes. Starting a counseling center, excellent. We need more and more and more counseling centers all over, not only in cities like Bangalore, but even in smaller towns. But you said, I want to start a counseling center like you, Ali. No, please don't. Shobha, you are different. You are unique. You have certain qualities which are entirely your own. So start a counseling center, which is like Shobha's, not like Ali's. Of course, traveling all over the world, all of us are very, very fond of traveling all over the place. Only difference is that people keep on talking about traveling all over the uh, world. I personally have this bucket list or this desire that I should keep traveling all over India. I think India is a mini world and I think there's so much more to see which I have not seen. So whenever I get this opportunity, this wonderful COVID came and uh, you know has put a full stop on people's travel and people's activities and all that. I'm hoping that things will uh, uh, improve and things will move on for the uh, better. In fact, what we did, we were having a nice uh, lively discussion among our uh, team in Banjara when we were talking about uh, bucket list. And Sonal managed to pull out a very nice short uh, uh, you know, video, which gives you a very nice idea about how to go about this, uh, you know, making a bucket list and things like that. So I think now what I will do is I'll take my break and I will ask Sonal to just update you on what's happening in Banjara and also to show you that uh, video. Okay, here you are, Sonal. Wonderful Shobha. Look forward to go to Goa. 
even uh, I had Goa on my bucket list and it happened to be that there was a program from Banjara and we could go there, you know, without taking an effort, one of the item on the bucket list, I could just tick it. You'll see the video very shortly. Anisi is working towards presenting it to you. Till then, I'll just tell you what's happening at Banjara. Yeah. Before I even uh, move on to what's happening at Banjara, I'd like to tell that next Saturday, the 10th of December, we won't have the Facebook Live. And you must be wondering why. You know, every year on the second Saturday of December, we have Helping Hand Annual Day. Now, Helping Hand, many of you must be knowing, but still I would like to explain. It's a part of volunteering service with Panjara Academy does. And our Helping Hand volunteers are spread all over Bangalore hospitals. We have around 300 odd volunteers working, completely doing voluntary service without even expecting a piece of biscuit, I would say. That's the kind of dedication they carry. So once in a year, we have an annual day for them and we you know, have games and a lot of fun time for all the volunteers. So whoever is willing to be a volunteer can join us on 10th of December at Manthan, which is a property of Banjara in front of Delhi Public School North. You all are welcome. If at all you want to contact office and uh, give your name and registration, Anis will help you out in doing that. Yeah. And uh, next is 17th of December. We will be having a talk, FB Live back again in action. And the topic will be dealing or living with an alcoholic. I say that that is so very important to understand because nowadays we hear a lot of people going through that difficult time and they want to be with that person but don't know how to go about it. It's really sensitive. I would say it's very commandable to be so caring and yet being with that person despite all the trouble that they go through. Okay. Anis, are you ready? Yeah, so here is the video and you can start looking at it. Start making your bucket list. I'll get back to you again with some of the other things that's happening at Banjara. Here is the video for you. Yeah. So till she gets prepared, I'll just tell that DCS admissions have started DCS 24. Yeah, so next year admissions have already started. Whomever you think is going to get benefited from this course, please tell them to get in touch with office and start with the process. As you know, it's a it's not like any other course or college there where you just send an application online and finish the admission procedure. We would love to meet those people who are if not even made up their mind fine, but want to know what is counseling all about what it takes to be a counselor, want to know what is it that she has to do in this one year. Everything we will be happy to explain one-on-one -on -one if anybody is interested, whether they be a student or not, but we would like to speak to them and explain to them what is counseling all about. Because there are a lot of myths about counseling that, oh, if I go to a counseling center, they will tell me what to do, what not to do. But there's nothing that we tell that you don't do or you you should be doing. It's just that we are there in the process to help the person explore their thoughts and come up with their own decision of their life. Yeah. So we are ready with the video and we talk later after this. choice. 
You are going to die. Scary thought, right? Each of us has a limited time on this earth. You might die tomorrow, or you might die decades from now, but eventually, you will die. So the question is, what are you doing today with the limited time that you have on this earth? Well, one thing you can do is make a bucket list full of all the goals you'd like to accomplish, and then create habits that help you achieve these outcomes. Hi, this is Joy from developgoodhabits.com, and in this video, I will talk about how to make the perfect bucket list for you. I'll cover topics like what is a bucket list, the five elements of the perfect bucket list, and a few simple tools you can use to maintain this collection of goals. So let's get to it. What is a bucket list? Simply put, a bucket list is a collection of activities that you haven't done or experienced, but want to do or try before you die. The term traces its historical roots to the phrase kick the bucket, but it gained popularity from the 2007 movie The Bucket List. In this film, Jack Nicholson and Morgan Freeman played terminal lung cancer patients who meet in a hospital for treatment. Eventually, both patients get out of the hospital to accomplish everything that they've ever wanted to do and cross off item after item from their list of things to do. Sounds interesting, right? Well, if you'd like to create a bucket list of your own, then there are five elements that should be included. These elements come in the form of questions, and I will include a few examples you can use to flesh out your own list. Element number one, becoming. Who or what do I want to be? Consider all the things that you've wanted to become in life. For example, you've probably always wanted to be an artist, but someone persuaded you to go into sales. It could mean mastering new skills or being in a certain role. Element number one is about working towards being the best version of who you are. Examples of bucket list items include being a best-selling author, be a loving spouse, be the person every member of my family can count on during tough times. Element number two, acquiring. What things do I want? Many people consider material possessions as essential for a well-lived life. Although many of you might disagree about the materialistic tone of this, the essence here is that having the essential material possessions can provide a sense of security and comfort that can provide peace of mind. Your list could look something like have a nice ranch house close to nature, have a home office where you can work close to family, have the most elegant dinnerware set that can become a family heirloom. Element number three, accomplishing. What do I want to do? This element encourages you to see what you want to accomplish during your remaining hours on Earth. These could be tasks that completely change the course of your life, or simple habits you'd like to develop. For example, show kindness to a total stranger. Conquer fear of heights by skydiving in New Zealand. Show gratitude to people who helped me along the way. Element number four, traveling. Where do I want to go? Traveling is the best form of education. We learn about other cultures and, at the same time, get to know ourselves deeper. Travel is essential for growth, and it should not be excluded from your bucket list. Jot down all the places you'd like to visit. Visit Easter Island. Explore Machu Picchu. Travel Asia, Japan, China, India, the Philippines, and Thailand. Element number five, imprinting. What do I want to see? This element serves as the holding pen for all the items in the first four sections of your bucket list. The purpose of the items you list here is to create the wonderful memories you'll carry throughout your lifetime. Examples for your bucket list. Watch 100 sunrises from 100 different countries. Check out the Aurora Borealis. Enjoy the view from the highest place on earth with the person I love the most. Maintaining your bucket list. Now you might wonder, where do I write and maintain this list? To be honest, it really depends on what you prefer. Some people will keep a physical copy of their list, usually in a journal or on a piece of paper like a shopping list. Others keep things digital and use apps like Evernote where they can access their list from any device. Next, there are some who maintain an Excel spreadsheet to keep track of their hundreds, even thousands of items. Finally, Many people join online communities where they post the contents of their list and other members can track their progress. No matter where you put your list, the important thing is you commit to accomplishing the items you've placed there. 
final thoughts on crafting your bucket list. It's a paradox. Bucket lists are usually made by people who think they are running out of time and need to do what they've always wanted to do the most before death arrives. And yet, it is a wonderful way to keep inspired about life. If you're interested in more ideas for your bucket list, then you should check out the blog post that's included in the description box of this video, which includes over 300 ideas. Or go directly to our website, developgoodhabits.com forward slash bucket dash list dash ideas. So, what would you include in your bucket list? What are you doing today to cross off items from this list? Leave your answers to these questions in the comment section below. Finally, So yes, I think that was a good start to start thinking. How do we make a bucket list and what can be the points in the bucket list? Yeah. And as you all know, Banjara Academy provides free counseling. So if at all you need a friend or someone whom you can discuss it out your bucket list and then start jotting it down. Feel free to come back to us anytime. We will be happy to be part of that process as well. That's where I say, that, you know, people have a different understanding. I will go to a counselor only if I have a problem, but I don't have any problem. We say, do come over just to discuss out something what is, you don't even know about it. Once you sit in front of a counselor, some thoughts come to you because we human beings are thought generating machines. But when you are speaking in front of a counselor, how the counselor responds to your thoughts, to your sharing is something you need to experience. And that is the experience. We give it completely free. And if at all, somebody wants to come again and again, people think that, oh, the, maybe the first time is free. And after that, it is like charge service. Never any number of times a counselee can come to us and the whole experience is completely free. Yeah. So please spread this word that Banjara offers free counselling and uh, Diploma in Counselling Skills at uh, DCS 24 admissions have started. Start spreading the word. Let us have more and more counsellors so that the population that our country has should have at least one person to trust and have that uh, trust in that person and talk to that person, right? Apart from that, very soon we will be announcing certificate in life skills plus training a classroom course at Banjara, which was like past three years was not we were not able to do due to this COVID and online stuff. So again, we are going to come back with CLS, Certificate in Life Skills, plus training. Both are two different uh, things where somebody can take only Certificate in Life Skills and somebody can take the whole Certificate in Life Skills plus training. For further inquiries, please call up office. They will help you out further. Yeah. Yes, and Roshan says, believe in minimalism. After living in a big mansion in Sikandrabad, here I am in a small little roof full of positive vibes. Whoever comes will enjoy, laugh and be happy with whatever little I have. Maybe materialistic things, maybe very little that you have, Roshan, but I know you have a big heart and that is something very important to enjoy with you. Yeah. So I'll repeat, on 10th of December, we don't have Facebook Live, but you all are welcome to Manthan at for the helping hand annual day and know more about how to be a volunteer if anybody wants to join as a volunteer please come over and even if you don't want to be joining as a volunteer but want to know what is this helping and volunteering service do come and uh, be a part of the celebration and on 17th of december the topic is dealing or living with an alcoholic by dr ali 
that's for today see you all on 17th and whoever wishes to can come on 10th also to manthan have a great weekend